Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about about werewolves. Yes. Yeah. I I really love werewolves, man. I really really enjoy all kinds of werewolf stories. Right. And to me, I, I did a little checking before we started the show, and I was kind of see how much werewolf, you know, how much wolves are represented in mythology, and I came up with you know this massive list. Really, I mean, it, and it, it, the wolves are heavily represented in in Inuit mythology and in Amarok, uh, uh, in Turkish mythology, uh, Fenris and and Norse mythology. A slew of them, you know, Romulus and Remus's mom was a she wolf. Well, that was well, that goes well. Yes and no. no yes and no on, on the Romulus she wolf mom. Correct. Because okay. Th th that part of that, right? There's different versions of that. Okay. But this is true only because this is what Mars did. Yes. Okay. Okay. Speak. Okay. Right. Okay. And that's how that happened. Okay. But so they they did call her a she wolf. Mm-hmm. But in a lot of paintings, she was actually a Roman girl, okay, a Roman woman. Okay, okay. so so right. So the the idea of the dog situation, which is true, it was these two sons that went in. Okay, more like a Cain and Abel story. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what it was like, mm -hmm. right? But they do base it off of that based on what you just said, because of course the dogs were fighting against each other, right? As the two boys did. In other renderings and other stories, um, this this young girl, Mars Light. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you know Mars being a Roman god, right. based on that situation, and that's how the whole idea of, of, of the Roman uh, story got based off of that because of, you know Rome had had to have a leader, and after he killed his brother, right. then that's exactly how the birth of Rome began. Right, right. So. The significance of the Romulus Remus story is that this was the foundation of the Roman Empire. So yes. this is like their earliest myth about how Rome gets started. So you yes. can imagine how the association of them uh, being, uh, you know, bred off of a, 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 a wolf would be significant. Well, wolves is very interesting because when you're basing werewolf stories, to me, they're basing this these stories um, I call them rogue wolves, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they're ravenous. Yeah, right. Yes, and they're killers. That's right. Um, right. Yeah. And so they have no sense of understanding any type of morality. That's right. Right. Yeah. Any of these wolves you see, that's what you're going to be looking right. at. Right. Definitely. Okay. But if you can, real quick, pull up ancient Kemet, and it's a city called. Lycopolis. And Lycopolis is called the City of Wolves. Lycopolis. Correct. Okay. In ancient Kemet. And if you see Lycopolis there, okay, the reason why I wanted to bring that up because one of the most interesting things about Lycopolis is who comes out of ancient Kemet. I had to spring that one on you since you brought me. Yes. Like oh, confidence is very important. Okay, let's see what comes up here. You see it? Yeah, okay, okay. Like confidence. Okay, here we go. All right. So okay. it's right there. Okay. Like confidence is very important because yeah. there's there's a couple of things that we need to discuss about that. So I wanted to bring that into the werewolf story. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. These are me, ravenous wolves. Let me okay. Let, this this in case you're uh, trying to get up on what Lycopolis is, let me just give you the quick yeah. definition here. Okay, Lycopolis is an ancient Kemetic city on the west bank of the Nile, located in Upper Kemet. It yeah. was the capital city in the 13th nome of Upper of Upper Kemet. Yes. Okay. So, in that part of it, okay. you're going to get two. Yeah. Two, which is brother Anubis uh -huh. and Whipwahet. Yes. Okay. So, these, these to me was the concept that brought to me, from what my studies are, as far as the understanding of many wolf stories, because... Of course, the oldest wolf stories that have been written or documented um, would be from ancient Kemet. They said, okay, they had the head of jackals. Yeah, that's right. 
That's they right. call them jackal head. Yes. Okay, so they also have the wolf hair and the dogs hair. Mm-hmm. And those dogs uh, would be more the form of whip head and what he would be like. Yes. Okay, so so you have uh, two different versions of that. So those would be the um if you were to say the wolf type of mentality because these are actual warriors or protectors or okay. guardians right exactly you can see that representation that right there yeah so there you go yeah so that's an example so so these would be because when you're talking about africa Mm-hmm. Right, they are talking about these jackal heads. Now, if you look at something like this, and if you was to look at a wolf like an underworld, yeah, it's almost close in some representations of that. Okay, mm-hmm. so they have oh, wait, so there's so so it's very similar in some ways because you can kind of see some of the features, so you kind of kind of get an idea of what I mean. But but Anubis is very powerful in ancient Kemet. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay, so so we've seen so we've seen a connection, you know, obviously with zombie mythology coming from Africa. Uh, the earliest really uh, vampire stories are Akasha. Are is that what we're saying with with werewolves as well? That the the oldest representation comes from Africa? Uh, because you, when you're looking, um, a lot of people say no, but a lot of people. Okay, some people say yes, some uh, people say no. Right, because you, you're talking about there's different types of werewolf stories that are all over, right? Mm-hmm. In certain parts of the earth where you're not just talking about Africa, like, okay, it wouldn't be a foundation for everything. But the stories that I get, okay, are connecting dots, mm-hmm. okay, to me, circles around that. Yeah. Okay, like I give you an example about ghost writers. We talked about that. Right. Right. So, the, right. So, to me, it kind of gives me more of what that would look like. See, there you go. So, you yeah. see some similarities. Yeah, yeah, I see that. You see some similarities. See the face. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Yeah, around the eyes. But this yeah. guy, right? This guy here is a rogue, though. He's a killer. Yeah. Okay. But Anubis or Anpu is the protector. Right. Absolutely. Leads you to Maat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's this person's type. Yeah, okay. That's this person's mind. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Because he must guard over, right, what they call, you know, they call the place of the cemetery where the soldiers died. We call them, right? We, we got different names for them, but of course, they're guardians of the Nasuda people who are going to, right, to time travel, go to the afterlife where they're going to be judged by mods. Right. You saw that, right? In the, in the movie, what was that, Gods of Egypt? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so that's an example of that. Okay. okay. Whiplehead just goes to war. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Whiplehead is, a, is a, you know, that's what he does. When the Pharaoh goes, we're going to go fight and we're going to deal with his enemies. <laughs> that's what we're going to do, right? <laughs> and that's right. And so he, so that's, who they, that's what they do. Yeah. And there's actual reliefs. Yeah. There's reliefs of dogs going to war. Yeah. With, with the Nisu. Right, right. And they call that Whiplehead. Whiplehead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's not as many representations of him. But, you know, it seems like he's a foundational character. Well, he likes to do a whole lot of fighting. I know that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, right. He likes to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do, do you like modern? Okay. So, you know, while obviously near Halloween, every Halloween, I'm going to watch An American Werewolf in London. You know, I, I like werewolves. Yeah. My thing is, you know, every time they get into this beastly mode. Right. Right? Yeah. You know it's coming. Right. Right? It, it, it's jaws and claws into the throat. <laughs> <laughs> right? Until it's over, right? It's right. Happy, yeah. Right? And so these are really good movies to watch. I, I mean, I like watching werewolf movies. Yeah. Um, I think somebody should put them in chat. Right. You know, but of course, you know, they're just running out, right? Just ramping. I mean, okay, because they're naturally pack animals, is that what you're seeing that's lacking here? It's like um, werewolves are naturally pack animals, so they, they need they yeah, exactly a pack. They are. And, yeah. and, the problem, and the problem is, well, I don't say the problem, but the, the movie does not show that. They yeah. show a lone wolf. Yeah. Right? Just one. Yeah. Right, there's not a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, there's some movies like Underworld and other movies like that, but 
this one. And they're more regimented, just, right? In Underworld, they're regimented, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's a whole different thing. Right. Yeah. But this one here is just one wolf. Yeah. It's a great film. Like, what I did like about it, though, was, like, we kind of get introduced to, like, you know, English countryside folklore. You know, because that's really what, because they're telling him their mythology about the wolves and the moors as he's venturing out, right, into this uh, 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 just kind of open country land. Yes. And, and so, I think the way they did it, um, in my opinion, I mean, it was a good movie. This one here was one of the most original forms. Because you actually see him changing. Okay, the transformation scene in this, yeah, guys, scene is, is one of the best things you'll ever see in a movie. I think, yeah, absolutely. They got absolutely. down. They, and it, you got to remember, what year was this that this comes out? Was it? A, 80? Must 80s. Have, yeah, well, it must have been in the 80s, right? Yeah, it was. It had to be early 80s, like 84. Let me see if I can pull yeah, it up right quick. Early 80s? Yeah, I mean, so you know, we got to remember what was going on. This is John Landis. This is 1981. See, okay. Is that yeah, this is 1981, and the crazy thing. So this film was 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 directed by uh, John Landis, who would then go on to direct Thriller. Yeah. And Thriller was a direct uh, product of this film. Wow. Right. I mean, the whole style, like everything they did. You know, he was walking out night. You know, it was just it was just classically put together. But just like yeah, th this really for a lot of people kind of defined was like our first like. For a generation, our look at, at, at werewolves. Yeah, it said there's, um, you got the book series of Shades of Memnon. And Memnon has what the cause of Sekhmet. Right. And he's fighting werewolves in that in that book. Okay. He's getting down with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so, listen, when you got the claws of Sekhmet. Yeah. Right? Ain't nobody going to be able to deal with no lion. Right, right. This is the power of Sekhmet. Yeah. Right, this, right. This is the power. Even the listen. I mean, I was looking at a, a, a nature channel, right? uh -huh. and the male lion is able to handle at least, at least now thirty hyenas. Dang, man. I mean, if they, right, he yeah. can handle. Right, this is a this is a horde of them. Yeah, right. right? He's and he can hold his own. Yeah. And I mean, this is amazing to watch this battle go on. Yeah. With all these hyenas coming, and he's right. He's, he's dealing with it. Wow. He's a bad dude. Wow. And hyenas <laughs> are some bad. I mean, hyenas are okay. some raw creatures, man. Yeah. 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 Hyenas and I are mean, some I, raw creatures. I get it that a lot of people don't understand, even though you have uh, pride of lions, but when you're talking about like a female lion, she can stand there, man, and, and hold her ground, man, for yeah. catch almost anything. Yeah. And they're going to duke it out, man, to, you know, she's caught uh, leopards. Yeah. And other things, you know, leopards are just, right? Yeah. They're fierce, but lions are brave. Yeah. You know, so, again, it's just me talking about, yeah, good movie, but, man, I'm telling you, it's, you know, uh, it, it's right in there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, wasn't there American Werewolf in England? They did. Oh, I think the next one they did was in Paris. Oh, Paris, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. London is in Paris. Paris. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think that one was as good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but so look.